In a couple of previous videos, I started the process of building a 386SX upgrade for my 286 build. And here's what my motherboard currently looks like for my 286, and where I had my 286 processor initially with a PLCC socket, I pulled that out and replaced it with this style of socket so that I can drop in a small interposer board that would contain a 386SX. So if I pull up a picture of that real quickly, this is what this board looks like. So it's a small PCB. Uh, off to the right, this is the format for that 286 socket. I'll basically just use pin headers here. Off to the left is a 386SX processor that I'll drop on there. And then I have three 74, 573s that will do address latching. So take the addresses from the 386 and latch them before sending them out as if they were coming from the 286. And then down here I have a PLD, basically a GAL chip that I'm using that does some of the logic just to convert between the 386 control signals and the 286 signals that I need for my, my current system. And then I have some capacitors uh, basically surrounding my 386. And it happens to be that on my 286 board, I also have capacitors surrounding the socket. So there's there should be plenty of capacitance there as I get into this. And I've got a couple of resistors for pull up or pull down. And if I jump over to the schematic real quickly on this, it's nothing too complicated. Uh, once, once I've gotten through this, it seems like most of the things I turned out okay here. So to the left, this is a 286, and basically that's just representing that socket and all the signals that connect to the rest of my system already. And then here's the 386 processor. So what I've done is I've tried to connect you know, the signals that make sense as direct connections uh, where that was obvious. Any of the addresses coming out of the 386 are gonna go through these latches before they're dropped into the pins for the where the 286 would be. And then I have this GAL 16V8 that I'm using. And then with this, it's taking some of the signals from the 386 and building signals that I need for my 286 functionality that the 386 does not offer, uh, like S1, S0 as an example. And then up here, there are a couple others. There's a next address and I'm just, I, I left a resistor in place there, but I'm just basically saying a zero ohm resistor or a short take this NA uh, active low to ground, which means that this, the processor is always gonna be trying to do address pipelining. It's gonna pull the next address early if it can. And then this other ADS active low, I'm gonna pull up high. Now this design is, is not mine, so this goes back to this graphic here uh, from VLSI Technology. Uh, this is a nice little reference that uh, really what I've done is I've taken this and implemented it then into my, my version, uh, which is pretty close to what you see here from VLSI Technology. Now along with that, there is this PAL that they're showing. I'm using a GAL. Uh, but basically, in the same guide that this came from, the author, uh, Al Widener, provides some um, palism that is to be put onto that pal. And so I've converted that over to couple, and here you can see the flavor of what that looks like uh, after I've converted that to couple. So I've taken that, I've put that onto that PLD, and then I get something like this for that upgrade interposer. And I've got two versions here. The one on the left is using a 386SX. And initially when I built that and tried testing it, it was not working. Unfortunately with the SX, you have to run with a pretty fast minimum speed in the megahertz. And that's tricky for me to debug that. So I had ordered up an SXL, a 386SXL that lets me run the clock at a very slow speed if I want or completely pause the clock. It's basically a fully static version of the 386. And interestingly, when I built this and put it together and put it in my system, I put a low speed clock on it, hooked up my debugger, and everything was working with the simple little test program. I was, I was just doing a simple little loop uh, and incrementing some values, calling a procedure. So just making sure that I could test the ROM and the RAM, 
everything was working and I did not make any changes other than a different processor, which should not have made a difference here as far as the actual working of it. Uh, so then I did uh, take that and swapped out the code in my 286 to something a little more capable. And in this case, I'm just simply writing out to this LCD on my system. That requires that I access ROM, I access RAM, I access a PPI or programmable peripheral interface on my 286 board. And that ended up working at low speed. So then I put in a high speed clock and it continued to work. So that made me wonder what was wrong with the first one of these that I put together, uh, the picture on the left. So I went back and I triple checked every connection and it ended up, ended up that I had one bad solder connection on this U7, so one of these latches. And I, I swear I previously uh, had ohmed that out, but for some reason I must have missed it or I was touching the pad and not the leg of the IC. Regardless, I soldered that one pin resolder that one pin and that sx is working perfectly fine too so i now have a pair of upgrades i have an sx version and an sxl version uh, now part of this initially i was pulling the next address active low signal high through resistor r1 and after i've been testing it it seems like uh, pulling it low works out just fine so i am doing address pipelining with both versions of these and so that's the change that you see there. Instead of a resistor pulling up on the back side, I just am taking that signal and pulling it down to ground. So once I put that in my system, it looks like this. And here you can see that I am up and running with that LCD output. So this is running the SXL in this version. Uh, there's a little oscillator to the left and I have a 24 megahertz oscillator. So my clock two or bus clock system clock is running at that 24 megahertz. The processor internally would run at half of that, so that's the my 12 megahertz that the processor is running at. Now, once I repopulate all of my my video card, sound card, extended memory card, all of that in the system, I doubt I'll be able to run at that speed. I'll drop back down to a uh, eight, nine, maybe 10 megahertz uh, on the high side. I have placed, if anybody's interested, the files for this. So the source project, which I did in Easy ADA, I have that in my GitHub along with the, the Gerber files. So I, I made a version 0 0.04 with the minor change in bringing the NA line low instead of the resistor taking it high. Uh, and then I rerouted the, the board. But those Gerber files are there if you want to use it as is. If you want to experiment with it, feel free. Or if you want to take the source project and make it your own, go for it. And I did just use an auto router, so if you don't like auto routing, you can reroute it if you prefer to have your own routing done on it. And I also placed the PLD and JED file, so the source code for that GAL chip that I'm using, along with a JED file that's ready to be burned or written to a, a PAL or GAL. In this case, again, I'm using a GAL. So those files are there, and if anybody has suggestions or if you do experiment with it and uh, find issues with it, let me know. And uh, I need to do further testing with it at this point. I need to get my full system reassembled and just make sure everything is working well. But I don't see why I would have any issues at this point, being that ROM, RAM, and I.O. all appear to be working fine. That's it for now. I know some of you are playing around with the idea of trying a 386SX upgrade for one of your 286 systems uh, or trying to go to a 486 flavor. So maybe this will be helpful, helpful for some of you and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks.